Hello, hello. So today I'm going to talk about airspace classes. So I'm sure that you've come across it in your flight sim or aviation experience that there's different classes of airspace. You have class A, class B, class C. But what exactly is airspace and what do these different classes mean? Basically, the air or the atmosphere above a country is controlled by that country. That piece of atmosphere above the land is that country's airspace. Now, a country's overall airspace can be divided into different classes. There are seven classes in total, ranging from class A through to class G. Each airspace class is basically a set of rules which describe how aircraft should fly and also how air traffic control interact with those aircraft. Overall, this allows a country to better control the flow of planes within its airspace for safety and also for security. Now, these seven classes have been created and defined by the International Civil Aviation Organization, or the ICAO for short. These were created in an attempt to standardize the airspace across the planet. All countries adhere to these regulations, however, they do alter the airspace classes to suit their own needs. For example, a country does not have to use all seven classes to control their airspace. They may only use maybe four out of the seven classes. A country can also add specific rules to their airspace regulations. So what I'm going to do is explain the basic differences between the seven classes as defined by the ICAO. So the seven classes fall into two main categories. You have controlled airspace and uncontrolled airspace. So controlled airspace is an area of sky where air traffic control have authority. They are giving instructions like cleared for takeoff, cleared to land, ATC are in charge and they are controlling the planes. Uncontrolled airspace, as you can guess, is the opposite. Now, air traffic control are present in uncontrolled airspace, but they are more of an advisory service. They can give weather updates, for example, if a pilot requests them. So, classes A to E are within controlled airspace, and classes F and G are uncontrolled. So, let's start at the top and work our way down so we can look at the differences. So, for Class A airspace, only IFR flights are allowed and they have to be cleared by air traffic control before they can enter Class A airspace. Air traffic control are also responsible for ensuring that planes are kept a safe distance away from each other. For Class B airspace, IFR and VFR flights are allowed provided they've been given clearance. Air traffic control ensure safe separation for all flights within the airspace. In Class C airspace, things start to get a little complicated, but try to stick with me. So, first of all, IFR and VFR flights are allowed. Now, here's the difference. Air traffic control provides separation instructions to keep IFR flights away from other IFR, but also VFR flights. They also provide VFR flights with separation instructions from IFR flights. Now, what they won't do is separate VFR flights from other VFR flights. Instead, they will give VFR pilots a traffic information service. So, they'll talk to VFR pilots and advise them of other VFR traffic. However, the pilots involved need to maintain separation themselves. I hope that's all making sense. So, in Class D, IFR and VFR flights are allowed. Air traffic control will provide separation for IFR flights only and they will also provide IFR flights with traffic information about VFR flights. VFR pilots will receive traffic information about all other flights. And finally for controlled airspace, Class E. So again, IFR and VFR flights are allowed. However, VFR flights are allowed to fly into Class E airspace without prior clearance from ATC. IFR flights are only separated from other IFR flights and all aircraft will be given traffic information but only when it's practical or when it's possible. It's not a service that will be given all of the time. So I know the subtle differences between classes C, D and E are confusing. To tell you the truth I struggle to get my head around it myself. But you can see that there's almost a, a sort of a rank of importance within these classes. Class A being the most important, where air traffic control are kept very busy, and then Class E, where the rules and regulations are a bit more relaxed. 
So let's look quickly at the last two classes and the differences there. So in class F, IFR and VFR flights are allowed with no prior clearance. IFR flights may be able to receive a separation service if it's available. Also, all flights can request either traffic or information services as well, the key word being request. As I said earlier, air traffic control in uncontrolled airspace won't instigate much communication. They're only there if pilots request information from them. And then finally, in class G, IFR and VFR flights are allowed, and only an information or traffic advisory service is provided if it's even available in the first place. So that's about it for airspace classes. If you're interested in seeing how this is implemented where you are, I would recommend jumping onto Wikipedia to have a look. On this article it lists several countries and you can read about which classes they use and any special rules that they have added. If you just do a search for airspace classes you should be able to find it easily enough. Anyway, looking forward to my next video, I'm going to do a comprehensive guide on the Garmin G1000 and looking at all the cool little tricks that that unit can do. Thank you very much for watching, take care out there and I'll catch you later.